Protests are taking place after the verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial. Yeah, after a total of approximately 26 hours of deliberations, the jury found him not guilty on all charges. Rittenhouse was 17 in August of 2020 when he shot three people, killing two and wounding one. Here's ABC's Rena Roy with the reaction from around the country. Kyle Rittenhouse now a free man after the jury found him not guilty on all five charges. The first count of the information, Joseph Rosenbaum. We, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. The 18-year-old emotional as the verdicts were read, hugging one of his defense attorneys. Rittenhouse claims he acted in self-defense as he shot and killed Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber and wounded Gage Grosskreutz during protests in August of 2020 over the police shooting of Jacob Blake. I don't think he could have won without taking the witness stand and telling his story. He didn't have baggage that a lot of sometimes criminal defendants have. He had no prior records, a clean history. Um, it was definite net plus. Huber's father believes this verdict sends the message it's okay for teens to walk around with AR-15s. I think we're all just in shock. We did not expect this. This was a this was just adding insult to injury. Following the verdict, President Biden called for peace. I stand by what the jury has concluded. The jury system works and we have to abide by it. But the vice president believes the system needs reform. I've spent a majority of my career working to make the criminal justice system more equitable and clearly there's a lot more work to do. There were several protests across the country, including Portland, Oregon and New York City. Young black boys like Trayvon Martin are shot dead because they're carrying around Skittles. And someone like Rittenhouse is not guilty in all verdicts when he shot two people. Outside the courthouse in Kenosha, a few dozen demonstrators gathered to voice their opposition to the verdict, but there were those who supported the jury's decision. Kudos to Kyle. I'm glad he's free. I hope these people can respect the decision. Being an American doesn't mean you can get a, get a court decision you like. It means you're going to respect the court decision you get. Rena Roy, ABC News, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Well, there has been some beautiful weather to start looking at all the lights that have been going up. And, you know, after the whole pandemic started, I think we all lightened up about you can turn your holiday lights on early. You yes. know, I mean, we just needed well, some joy. Speaking of the weather, I was at UTSA's tailgate. Yes. And I almost didn't come back. Obviously, the atmosphere was great. People <laughs> yeah. were having a good time. But the weather felt amazing. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, it was good. Uh, it was it got a bit more humid today, but it wasn't too warm, mainly because of the clouds that hung around into the afternoon. So, yeah, really not a bad day. The humidity will really surge back in overnight. You'll notice it when you step out early tomorrow morning. But we do have another front that's not too far away and that will sweep away the humidity once again by this time tomorrow night. And that's just one of two fronts in the forecast over the next week that's going to keep us on our toes just a little bit when it comes to the weather. Here's that deck of clouds that hung around into late afternoon. It broke up this evening, but as you just saw there toward the end of this time lapse, clouds have already begun to fill back in. We are going to see overcast skies tonight and even some fog developing over the next several hours through dawn tomorrow morning. Check out this dew point number yesterday. It was down in the 30s, so it has risen a lot today thanks to a southerly wind and it's a higher dew point light winds overnight that will contribute to again fog developing. So overnight we're looking at low temperatures not moving very much from where they are right now. In fact, I think in some spots temperatures will actually come up a few degrees overnight. For example, you just saw at the airport where it's 61. I think we'll come back up to 62, 63 overnight because as humidity continues to come back in, as our dew point numbers rise, the air temperature can't be any lower than the dew point. It can be the same as the dew point, but it can't be any lower. So as these numbers here, our dew points continue to climb overnight, I think in some instances that will actually bring temperatures up a few degrees, especially past midnight and then as we get into the overnight hour. So currently visibility is good across our area. You'll notice though in LaGrange visibility is down to three miles. I do think we'll see these visibility numbers in some cases drop below a half mile, even down to a quarter mile or less 
beginning overnight after midnight and continuing through early on Sunday. So that's something you'll want to consider as you're planning your Sunday. If you'll be out early, it will be very muggy with areas of fog. Check in with Sarah Spivey tomorrow morning on GMSA. She'll have the latest visibility numbers for you. If you'll be heading out the door, the door early tomorrow morning, staying humid through midday. The fog will clear up as we get to mid late morning. It'll be staying muggy and cloudy through midday, low 70s at lunchtime. So by lunchtime tomorrow, will already be as warm as we got today. And then as we head into the afternoon, that's when our next front arrives. This front will sweep through during the afternoon, early evening hours. We will carry a chance of rain here. And then by this time tomorrow night, we'll have a north wind in place. It will be breezy and humidity will be dropping. Our front currently that will move through tomorrow is starting to work into the Texas panhandle. It's got a little bit of lingering precipitation through the central plains. But again, this will make southward progress tonight and tomorrow morning. Again, as you step out in the morning, foggy and muggy. Uh, with a lot of cloud cover in place will stay cloudy through midday and even mostly cloudy through the afternoon as the front itself starts to move through. I expect we'll see a really broken line of some showers with this front. Rainfall coverage is going to be just about 20% across the area. And if you do get rain, it'll just be a quick hitting fleeting shower and then rain chances will come to an end again by this time tomorrow night front will be well to the south. No chance of rain sky still mostly cloudy, but turning breezy and not as humid. And then by Monday morning with drier air, our lows will be in the 50s. So jacket weather again as we get into Monday and Tuesday looking ahead to Turkey Day. Another front expected to move through our setup heading into Wednesday night and Thursday. A big trough of low pressure will send yet another front through our area as we get into Thursday. Right now we've got your rain chance at 40%. We'll take a closer look at your Thanksgiving Day forecast. I'll also show you some preliminary rainfall totals coming up in the next half hour. Guys. Looks good. Thank you so much, Katie. Mm -hmm. And this is a big Saturday for college football. Upsets, undefeated seasons kept alive. <laughs> Greg, what can you tell us? What can we look forward to? You know what? You were a part of it today because of that tailgate party for UTSA. The Roadrunners are West Division champs for the first time in school history. A list of firsts for this celebration. And they're going to have a first chance to host the Conference USA Championship game. We'll tell you all about it coming up. Plus, UIW Southland Conference champions coming up. The UTSA Roadrunners face their toughest challenge of the season, hosting UAB in front of 35,000 plus fans in the Animal Dome in a battle for the Conference USA West Division title. And UTSA would have to play from behind just about all day long. Down seven to nothing, Roadrunners were able to get even when Frank Harris finds Zakari Franklin, 15-yard touchdown. It would be tied at 14 all in the second, but UTSA would find themselves down 24-17 at the half. Third quarter, Harris finds Franklin again. This time, it is a 56-yard touchdown pass and run to tie it at 24 all. There goes the pass. And there goes Zakari, and into the end zone he goes after breaking that tackle. Roadrunners would actually take a 27-24 lead going into the fourth quarter on a 49-yard hunter to Plessis field goal. Once again, the Roadrunners would find themselves down again, 31-27, with just about five minutes to play in the game until UTSA goes on a seven-play, 77-yard touchdown drive, ending with Harris finding Oscar Cardenas off the turn, off a tip, and for the game-winning touchdown. Harris would finish with 323 yards, three TDs, and the Roadrunners 34-31 victory to win Conference USA West, stand defeated 11 0 will now host the Conference USA Championship in the Dome on Friday, December the 3rd after closing out the regular season in Denton next Saturday against North Texas. But here's something that, that's never, ever wrong with my team. It's their effort. They, they never go away. And we say it all the time, a champion has the ability to play one play longer than his opponent, and we played one play longer than they did tonight. That was it. I saw the play call, and uh, I knew I had a chance to, to give this team a win, and we executed not to where we wanted, but it happened. The snap was low, so uh, that kind of threw the play off from Jump Street. Um, and then I was rolling out to just try to figure out something. And uh, Oscar was still open, so I just, you know, threw it. Uh, he, t he got tipped, and he concentrated well, and I caught it. And, uh, you know, I was playing the game. That is awesome. Next up, North Texas wrap up the regular season Saturday in Denton at 1. 
Aggies unranked after a tough road loss to Ole Miss last week. Looking to bounce back today at home against Prairie View A&M. Aggies march right down the field on the opening drive. Handoff goes to Isaiah Spiller. This is for an 11-yard touchdown, capping a 10-play 55-yard drive. It's now 7-0. Now we advance to 14-0 when the wrecking crew earns their name. Antonio Johnson gets to the quarterback for a sack fumble. Aaron Hansford scoops and scores. And now it's 21-0 Aggies. Home crowd at Kyle Field is loving it. Second quarter offense stays hot. Quarterback Zach Calzada finds Moose Muhammad the third on a slant over the middle. He takes it 33 yards to the house. The Aggies lead 38 to nothing. The halftime, they're going to win 52 to three. Longhorns need to win out if they're going to be bowl eligible, trying to snap a five-game losing streak in West Virginia today. Texas once again needs to battle back, trailing 27-28 to 17 in the fourth quarter. Roshan Johnson takes a pitch, nice his way, six-yard touchdown. Longhorns go for two. They don't get it, so they trail 28-23. They hold the Mountaineers to a field goal and get the ball back with a chance to drive for the win, but quarterback Casey Thompson throws high in the end zone, intercepted to seal the victory. Longhorns fall 31-23, will not play in a bowl game this year. You know, they controlled the ball and um, kind of limited our opportunities, but we limited our own opportunities by, by not playing well, at least for about a quarter, quarter and a half in the game. The Longhorn season finale will be against Kansas State Friday at 11 a.m. in Austin. UIW wrapping up their regular season. The Houston Baptists looking to win the Southwest Conference, Southland Conference title outright. Great start for the Cardinals. Already up 7-0 in the first quarter. Moses Reynolds steps in front of the pass, takes it back 25 yards for a pick six. The John Jay grad puts UIW up 14-0 four minutes into the game. A few drives later, Cardinals offense goes to work. Quarterback Cam Ward slings it to C.J. Harding. 25-yard touchdown that makes it 21-0. Finally, Ward strikes again, this time with a quick throw to Darren Darian Chafin for an 11 yard score. The Cardinals put up 35 points in the first quarter alone. They're going to win at 55 14 claim the Southland Conference title. There's a selection show tomorrow at 11 for the playoffs. Undefeated Trinity taking undefeated Mary Harden Baylor in the first round of the Division three national tournament. Tigers down 6 3 in the fourth quarter trying to get a stop here on fourth and one with a little over two minutes left in regulation. But the Crusaders call game while Alfonso Thomas 17 yard touchdown run. The Tiger season is over 13 to 3 is the final coming up in the second half of the night who's advancing in the high school football playoffs and the Brandeis Broncos are state champs is coming up in just a few minutes. Well, lots to look forward to, but I still can't get over that UTSA no. game. I'm On the ground, in the air, tipped, still caught it. I would say it's sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, but there's They're nothing good. lucky about 11 and 0. <laughs> nope, not at all. Thanks, Greg. All right, we'll be right back. Health officials continue to urge everyone to get vaccinated, especially if they're planning to gather with friends and family. Yeah, they say those who are already vaccinated should consider getting that third booster shot of Pfizer or Moderna vaccines, which the CDC was just approved for everyone over 18. Here's ABC's Christine Sloan with the details. With 7 in 10 Americans saying they plan to gather with friends and family they don't live with for Thanksgiving, health officials are urging everyone who is eligible to get vaccinated. You have to create your so-called wall of prevention or the circle of safety is what we call it by having families and friends around you be fully vaccinated. On Friday, the CDC gave the green light for a booster shot of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines for all adults. But the hope is that it will reduce those breakthrough cases, reduce hospitalizations, reduce deaths, reduce transmission and severe illness. CVS and Walgreens already administering those booster shots. The decision from the CDC comes as at least 30 states are seeing a rise in cases of at least 10% over the past two weeks. In New Mexico, daily cases have increased by more than 60% in the past three weeks. We used to see about 8 to 10 patients on any given day in our community. As of today, we're averaging um, about 28 ICU patients, and we have more of those patients coming in every single day. As cases continue to rise, so does the death toll. More than 770,000 American lives lost. The latest data from the CDC and Johns Hopkins University shows more more people have died from the virus this year than in 2020. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Atlanta police now looking for a man who they say is responsible for causing a ground stop at America's busiest airport Saturday. And now Atlanta police are looking for that man. 42-year-old Kenny Wells allegedly put a concealed weapon in his luggage at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. The TSA says a screening x-ray alerted them to that gun in his bag. When agents began searching the bag, he allegedly lunged for it, setting the firearm off. 
Sources say the bullet was fired into the bag and did not strike anyone. However, three people were injured during that chaotic scene. Vice President Kamala Harris and her husband Doug Imhoff achieving another first in their historic roles. Today, the second family became the first to affix a white mezuzah. They affixed it to the right-hand side of the doorway of the vice presidential residence. It represents a sign of sanctity of Jewish home, of a Jewish home. The mezuzah was loaned by a rabbi in Atlanta. He also led the private ceremony at the Naval Observatory in October. Imhoff is the first Jewish spouse of a president or a vice president. Tomorrow, Americans will have the final say on who wins at the American Music Awards, with fans casting their votes this year on a very unusual platform, TikTok. AMA history and hitmaker Cardi B is hosting this year's show live from the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more on what to expect. The country's favorite musicians are taking the stage for this year's American Music Awards, the biggest show in the U.S. where the fans decide who takes home the top prizes. This year, it's up and it's stuck with show host Cardi B. The five-time AMA winner is up for three awards this year. My goal is just for people to have a good time. This is right here is like more like fun, like, hey, good time. I like the good vibes. I like to party. I want to, I want to like, like wake people up. So that's going to be me. Pop newcomer Olivia Rodrigo has the most nominations with seven. The driver's license star also has some fierce competition looking to beat her to the coveted title of new artist of the year, including 24K Golden, Givian, Mask Wolf, and the kid Leroy. The AMAs also adding in new categories, including favorite trending song along with favorite gospel artists and favorite Latin duo or group. And it wouldn't be the AMAs without some unpredictable performances. Rapper Tyler, the creator, set to bring his theatrics to the stage. He's one of the most unusual, imaginative, uh, just out and out, how on earth did he think of that? But perhaps one of the most anticipated duos firing up the audience, Megan Thee Stallion and BTS, as they look to butter up the crowd with their first live performance of their remixed hit. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. And you can watch the American Music Awards live right here tomorrow on ABC at 7 and we'll be on after. Still ahead, how much more you could be spending on this year's Thanksgiving feast. Millions of Americans are paying more to travel to their Thanksgiving destinations this year, thanks in part to higher gas prices. But as John Lawrence reports, that's not the only thing that will be more expensive during the upcoming holiday weekend. Get ready to fork out a little more money for your Thanksgiving feast. The American Farm Bureau Federation says it'll be 14% more based on their informal survey. It's really hard to point to any one thing, uh, but certainly um, the underlying factor for most of those elements is the global pandemic. The biggest reason for the 2021 increase? The turkey itself. The AFB, which bases its annual findings on nationwide pricing data, says bird costs are up about 24% higher this year. One important caveat? The survey was carried out before grocery stores started advertising promotional prices, which came out later this year. We've seen price fluctuations anywhere from 88 cents per pound all the way up to $1.50 per pound. Um, so certainly there's, there's a lot of variation that we're seeing at the, in the retail uh, space. And I think that's driving a lot of those concerns about shortages when, when people are out shopping. One way to save a little money this Thanksgiving is to be a picky shopper. Make sure that as you're spending your dollars that you're looking at not just maybe going to the same grocery store for all uh, items of the Thanksgiving dinner, but shop around a little bit uh, because there's certainly deals to be had, uh, but you might not find the same deal on every product in the same store. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Already just so excited that food. <laughs> Just so. We're making you hungry. Excited. Yes. I'll be here, but the station's providing Thanksgiving meal, so I don't have to cook. So that's <laughs> a silver lining. I will be here too, John Paul. And <laughs> let me just tell you, the food is really good. Okay. <laughs>
Something really to look good. forward to. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, comfortable out there now in terms of temperatures, but humidity went up a lot during the day today. So we've got air temperatures currently in the 60s, upper 60s down to the south of Highway 90, and it's that big jump up in humidity and our dew points that will set us up for some fog by early tomorrow. Visibility is looking good just now, but coming up in a few minutes, we'll talk about how much fog we could see through tomorrow morning, and I'll get you a more detailed look at your Thanksgiving forecast preview coming up. And Turkey Day is around the corner. I still can't believe it, but it's coming up fast. <laughs> what can we expect, Katie? Yeah, we've been keeping a really close eye on the Thanksgiving Day forecast. It looks like our weather pattern will be changing up a bit by the middle and latter part of next week, and that is one that favors rain chances. So I do have a chance of rain in the forecast for Thanksgiving. Right now it's looking like some scattered rain. But it does not appear that the whole day is going to be a complete washout. And I'll tell you why. So here's a look at our weather pattern heading past the weekend into the middle part of next week. You'll notice moving in from the west coast, a really big uh, sizable dip in the jet stream that extends all the way from Canada down to the southwestern United States and Texas. This is a big uh, trough of low pressure. Basically, this is what we need to get cold fronts, rain making energy, all of that. So this big dip in the jet stream here by Wednesday night will actually translate to a cold front down at the surface um, and the surface low will be all the way up near the Great Lakes, but the front itself will extend all the way across the plains and down into the northern tier of Texas by Wednesday night. Something else to note by late Wednesday, humidity will be back very high, so we'll have a lot of moisture to work with and this front will provide some good rain making energy and that does set us up for a chance of rain on Thanksgiving. But we'll continue to watch this closely. But as it looks right now, it does look like the front itself will move through during the first part of the day. So we will carry a chance of rain through the first part of the day on Thursday, even into the early part of the afternoon. But then as that front continues to drop south later in the day, Thursday and then into Friday, things do look pretty good. So for now, rain chances do look to be highest on Thanksgiving during the first part of the day. Again, there's still a few days to kind of work out the kinks in the forecast. And of course, we'll keep you updated, but that's how things are looking currently. And there's really good agreement with our forecast models in that front, moving through first part of the day with the rain and then things clearing out by late Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. Again, we'll keep you updated. Uh, Rainfall potential over the next week totals where you see the purples and even the pinks. Those are the higher rainfall totals and they do look to be off to the south and east of 35 along 35 and off to the southeast closer to places like Quero, DeWitt County, even Hallettsville, Lavaca County. You could potentially see some spots more than an inch of rain back toward the I-35 corridor. We're likely looking at half inch of rain to near an inch and then as you get west of 35 potential rainfall totals do fall off to less than an inch so more rain expected south and east of san antonio with the passage of that cold front again still some time to tweak those rainfall numbers but that's how things look at this time uh, of course as we get into next weekend that will be a big travel weekend thankfully with that front kind of clearing the area as we get into friday doesn't look like there will be a whole lot of bad weather across the country so hopefully Hopefully that will translate to some pretty smooth weather as we get into next weekend, a storm system moving into the Pacific Northwest and then possibly a little bit of wintry precipitation up near the Northeast, but through the central tier of the country, things do look pretty good. Again, still a couple days to tweak your Turkey Day forecast and the holiday weekend forecast for next weekend. We'll be here to keep you updated. It's gotten cloudy again and it's feeling pretty muggy, especially with calm winds at the airport. 63 in Pleasanton, 60 in Kerrville, and our dew point numbers are on their way back up. Yesterday, these numbers were down in the 30s. Now we're in the 50s and 60s, so it is starting to feel more humid out there. And with light winds in place overnight, paired with the humidity, that's a setup for some fogs. So we do expect areas of fog early tomorrow. Uh, keep in mind, front comes through tomorrow. Yes, we have a front tomorrow as well, not just the one on Thanksgiving. So we will have it looks like a broken line of some showers coming through tomorrow afternoon here in San Antonio. Our window for a spotty shower will be about 3 to 6 p.m. and then just breezy tomorrow night and cooler again by Monday. So that front, the front on Turkey Day, we've got some ups and downs in the week ahead, but we'll be here to keep you updated. Guys, lots to keep an eye on. Thanks yeah. for that, Katie. Mm -hmm.
All right, Greg, the boys are in KC getting ready to take on the Chiefs. And that's why you have me tonight, because Larry is in Kansas City, right? Getting ready for the big game tomorrow, the showdown with the Chiefs. We'll get you ready for that in just a moment as a big report coming in from KC. And the state champion goes to the Brandeis Broncos. First time ever in volleyball. Coming up. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys arrive in Kansas City tonight to prepare for their showdown tomorrow against the Chiefs. One of the first off the team bus is head coach Mike McCarthy. He's now won more games this season than he did all of last year with a 7-2 record. Right behind him, star quarterback Dak Prescott will match up against one of the other top quarterbacks in the league tomorrow and Patrick Mahomes. And how about Ezekiel Elliott looking to build on his two-touchdown performance against the Falcons last week. The Cowboys will be down a receiver after we found out on Friday that Amari Cooper will miss the next two games on the COVID reserve list. With more, here's our Larry Ramirez in Kansas City. Thank you very much, Greg. We are coming to you from just outside of downtown Kansas City, ahead of the Chiefs and Cowboys Sunday afternoon. Led by quarterback Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City is as dangerous as ever. The Chiefs offense is number one this season in total yardage, and Mahomes is the NFL's second leading passer. Cowboys running back Ezekiel Elliott says keeping the ball away from Mahomes as much as they can will be key. I think it's definitely important to us on offense just to you know make sure that you know we're staying ahead of a change that we're converting on third down uh you know just kind of making sure we're giving our defense uh you know enough rest time um you know just kind of not putting them in in bad situations so i mean that's just for us as offense like i said just you know staying on staying above staying in front of the chains um converting on third down and uh you know, scoring points. And the Cowboys' much improved defense will need to come up big time as well against the Chiefs Sunday afternoon. Greg, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Larry. Second round of the high school football playoffs wraps up tonight. Number one, Brennan taking on Los Fresnos in Class 6A Division One at Ferris Stadium today. Bears strike first, third and six at the 10. Quarterback Ashton Dubose keeps it himself, breaks a tackle in the backfield, races to the end zone with the first points of the game, 7-0. Next, Brennan possession, more offense. Dubose escapes the pocket, rolls right, finds a wide open Chase Campbell in the end zone for the 23-yard touchdown, 14-0 lead. Brennan is moving on, 63-10. Class 6A Division Two matchup at Florida Stadium in Edinburgh. Number nine, Taft taking on Edinburgh Vela. Raiders trail 17-0 in the third quarter. Fourth and 12, quarterback Justice Hurd finds Julio Sanchez. He makes two defenders miss. Along the sideline, cuts up field for the 20-yard touchdown. A huge play to make it 17-7. Let's head to the big game cover scoreboard for that final and more tonight. Taft, though, falls 27-24, ending their season. And Lanier, what a season for them. But it is now over, as you can see, 42-20, losing to McCallum Memorial. It all came down to this. Brandeis Volleyball taking on Keller for the UIL Class 6A state title at Curtis Colwell center in Garland. The Broncos are down two sets to one, but rallied to force the fifth set and took control early. First, Emma Halstead gets the push shot to fall. Brandeis leads 5-3. Then Carly Ferris finds her future TCU teammate, Jalen Gibson, for a spike, and the Broncos go up 13-10. Finally, on match point, Ferris finds Leela Smalls for a shot off the block and out. That's the clincher for the first time in program history. Brandeis are your state champions. Three sets to two is the final. So surreal, you know, we've worked, this is something I've worked for, you know, ever since I stepped foot in the brand nice doors and all the hard work, all the pain, all the tears, all the, everything's been worth it. Not too many people get to this moment, especially with a team of, what, 10 or more seniors. So, you know, just to be with all my best friends and win the state title, it's, it's amazing. Congratulations. Here's a fun fact, by the way, from Andrew Seeley, who was in Garland today. The young man who caught the game-winning touchdown pass at UTSA, Oscar Cardenas, is also a graduate of Brandeis. So a very big day for the Broncos, indeed. Wow. Local, local people getting what they deserve. There. Yeah. It's awesome. A big round of applause to the Broncos there, for sure. Got it. We'll be right back.